Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the five forms of linear equations. This is in response to the questions asked by many of our high school students about linear equation. So there are five forms of linear equations that we are going to derive today. We have the two-point form, the point-slope form, the slope-intercept form, the intercept form, and the standard form. So we are going to derive each of these just from one single line. So let's begin with a graph of a line. We have here the Cartesian plane represented by these two lines. One is vertical, the other is horizontal. Then we draw this green line and let's identify two points. This blue point with coordinate at 1, 5 and this red point with coordinate at negative 1, positive 1. In a plane, two points determine a line. One property of a line is that it has a slope. And visually, the slope is the ratio of the rise over the run. Delta Y, or the chains in the Y direction, and Delta X, which is the chains in the horizontal direction. In terms of values, Delta Y is computed as the difference between two Y values, and Delta X is the difference between two X values. And our symbol for slope is M. Now, if we have another point here, xy, xy is this point, there's also another rise and another run here. Let's differentiate the two values by denoting this as delta y sub 2, whereas th this rise here is delta y sub 1. Here, the run is delta x sub 2, and in the first run, it's delta x sub 1. One property of a line is that its slope is uniform. That means if we have two slopes, m sub 1 and m sub 2, m sub 1 is the rise over the run, represented by this pink triangle, whereas the second slope is this purple rise over purple run, represented by this purple triangle, then these two slopes are equal. In general, if the coordinate of this red point is x sub 1, comma, y sub 1, and the coordinate of this blue point is x sub 2, comma, y sub 2, then using the formula for the slope, we can now represent this pink slope as y sub 2, which is this coordinate, minus y sub 1, that is our rise, divided by x sub 2, this coordinate here, and minus x sub 1, which is this coordinate, and that is now our run. That is equal to m sub 2, or the second slope. And the second slope is computed as the difference between the y values, y minus y sub 1, over the difference in the x values, x minus x sub 1. Now, this y sub 2 and y sub 1 are specific values in our graph, the same with x sub 2 and x sub 1, whereas the coordinates x comma y represents the coordinate of any point that is on the line. Let's interchange the left and the right side, and this form now is what we call as the two-point form. For example, in our graph here, since we know what's the value of x sub 2, y sub 2, x sub 1, y sub 1, we can substitute that in this formula. So doing the substitution now, our y sub 1 is 1, our x sub 1 is negative 1, and notice that we now have here minus negative 1. The minus sign is always there, and when you have a negative sign, you will have a double negative that becomes positive. Let's show the computation of that later on. Now, let's do the substitution at the right side. Our y sub 2 is 5. Our y sub 1 is this positive 1. So, we have 5 minus 1 over x sub 2. This is x sub 2, which is equal to 1, minus x sub 1, which is this negative 1. Then, let's simplify x minus negative 1 becomes x plus 1, 1 minus negative 1 becomes 1 plus 1, and 5 minus 1 equals 4, 1 plus 1 equals 2, and 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. Now, what do we know this about this 2 and about this formula? Notice that this right side of this two-point formula is exactly our formula for the slope, and we represent the slope as m. That means this right side here is just our m. And that will lead us to the second form, which we call as the point-slope form. The point-slope form looks like this. From the previous result using the two-point formula, we notice that the right side is simply the formula for the slope. So we substitute m for the right side. And we clear this fraction of its denominator by multiplying both sides of the equation by the quantity 
x times x minus 1. And here is the result. We now call this formula as the point slope form of this line. And so, substituting the values of x sub 1, y sub 1 into the formula, we now arrive at this value. Our y sub 1 is positive 1, and our x sub 1 is negative 1. So x minus negative 1 becomes x plus 1. And so this is now the point slope form of this line. Now, a special case happens when instead of having this x sub 1, y sub 1 to be any point on the line, when this specific point happens to be at the intersection between the y-axis and the line itself, then we call that point as our y-intercept. And at the y-intercept, the value of x is always zero, and the value of y could be any real number. Therefore, at the y-intercept, our y sub 1 would be this b, and our x sub 1 would be zero. And substituting those values, we now have y minus b, because our y sub 1 is now b. We know that the slope is m, and x sub 1 is zero. From here, x minus 0 is simply x, so we have mx at the right side, and we add b to both sides of the equation. This resulting form is now what we call as the slope-intercept form of the line. And therefore, using the same line, its slope-intercept form is now computed this way. We have y equals, the slope is given to be 2 based on our previous computation, and our y-intercept b is at y equals 1 2, 3. That's why we have this 3. So this is now the slope-intercept form of the same line, and this is the more familiar form that you are using, and this is very useful because this is now the functional form of a linear equation. If we replace this y with f of x, then for any input x, we can compute 2x plus 3 by just substituting whatever is the x input to the variable x at the right side. But we'll talk about linear function later on. So for now, think of this as the slope-intercept form, where the coefficient of x is the slope, and the constant 3 here is our y-intercept. Visually, this 3 is the y-coordinate of the point of intersection between the line and the y-axis. And this is very convenient in many computations involving linear equations. Now, let's go back to our two-point form. Let's say, instead of taking any two points on the line, these two points are the intercepts, meaning the x and the y intercepts. When these two points are the x and the y intercepts with coordinates of 0b and a0, notice that at the y-intercept, the value of x is always 0, and the value of y could be any real number. On the other hand, at the x-intercept, the value of y is always 0, and the value of x could be any real number. In general, we say that the coordinate of this x-intercept is at any point a, comma, 0, where the y-coordinate is always 0. And at the y-intercept, the x-coordinate is always 0, and the y-coordinate could be any real number. So if we substitute these two points in the two-point form, Notice that we'll arrive at this. Our y sub 1 is b. Our x sub 1 is 0. That's why we now have these two values. Our y sub 2 is 0. So you have this 0. Our y sub 1 is b. So you have this b. Our x sub 2 is a. That's why we have this a. And our x sub 1 is 0. That's why you have this 0. Then x minus 0 is x. 0 minus b is negative b. a minus 0 is a. So simplifying, we have y minus b over x equals negative b over a. If you are going to simplify this by multiplying both sides by a times x, or the shortcut of doing that is we cross multiply, this is the form that we arrive at. a times y minus b equals negative b times x. Then let's distribute a to this binomial to arrive at ay minus ab, and we copy the right side. And we have here the variable y, we have here the variable x. We want the variables x and y at the left side, so we interchange the positioning of minus ab and minus bx this way. This minus bx becomes positive bx, this minus ab becomes positive ab at the right side, and that is arrived at by applying the addition property of equality. Then, let's divide each of the terms by ab to make the right side equal to 1, and here is now 
the resulting equation. The right side is equal to 1. Here we can cancel out the a to get y over b. Here we can cancel out the b to get x over a. And the right side is ab divided by ab, which is equal to 1. And let's arrange this in alphabetical order with x coming first before y. We now have this form x over a plus y over b equals 1. And this is now the form which we call as the intercept form of a linear equation where a is the x-intercept and b is the y-intercept. So applying now this formula in our given graph here, we can now therefore write the equation of this green line to be x over the x-intercept of negative 3 halves plus y over the y-intercept of positive 3 and that is equal to 1 following this intercept form. We just substituted the value for a which is this a here and the value of b which is this b, which is a value of 3 here. Now, simplifying, instead of dividing by negative 3 halves, we can multiply x by the reciprocal, which is negative 2 over 3, to arrive at negative 2x over 3, and we just copy plus y over 3 equals 1. Now, notice here that the coefficient of x is still negative 2 thirds. By convention, we would like the coefficient of x to be positive, and therefore, we are going to multiply each of these terms by negative 1, resulting to positive 2x over 3, but this will become negative y over 3, and the right side becomes negative 1, and this is now the intercept form of this green line. Now, let's take a look at the next form. Not all the time we know the values of the x and the y intercepts. So in general, these two points could be any two points, and because of that, we need to derive the general form of a linear equation that is applicable even if the two given points are not the x and the y intercepts. And we can derive the general form of the quadratic equation by multiplying each of the terms of this equation by the denominator 3 to arrive at 2x minus y equals negative 3. And this is now in the form ax plus by equals c. Notice that our a here is capital to show that that is not the same as our x-intercept and our b is capital to show that that is different than our y-intercept and our right side is denoted by capital C. This is now called as the general form of a linear equation. So generally, this means that given any two points with coordinates x sub 1 comma y sub 1 and x sub 2 comma y sub 2, the general form of this green line is in the form ax plus by equals c. And so, we now have five forms. The first form is the two-point form. The blue point has a coordinate of 1 comma 5. The red point has a coordinate of negative 1, 1. Then, the two-point form of this green line is represented now by this y minus 1 over x plus 1 equals 5 minus 1 over 1 plus 1 or the simplified form of this. Now the second form is the point slope form of the same green line and the two-point formula is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1 and so based on what we know about this line we know that the slope is 2 y sub 1 is 1 x sub 1 is negative 1, then this is the point slope form of the same line. The third form is the slope intercept form. In here, we know that the slope is 2 and the y intercept is at 3. Therefore, the slope intercept form of the same line is y equals 2x plus 3. And the fourth form is the intercept form when we know the x and the y intercepts. And based on what is given, the equation of the line is simply equal to 2x over 3 minus y over 3 equals negative 1. Take note that by convention, we want the coefficient of a to be positive, and therefore when we make this 2 thirds positive, we multiply each of the terms by negative 1, resulting to a negative b, which is negative 1 third, and a negative c, which is negative 1. And finally, for the general form of the equation, we have 2x minus y equals negative 3. These are the five forms of a linear equation. Five different forms, five different equations, but they describe just one single line. In other words, all of these five forms mean the same thing. They describe this green line algebraically. 
It's like one substance, five different forms. For example, you can call me using different names. I am the same me, but you can call me Mr. Assistant. You can call me Lando. You can call me Sir. You can call me Roland. Or you can call me Teacher. Those are five different ways of referring to me. But you are referring to the same person. The same with forms of linear equations. There is one single line that you can describe in five different ways.